Yes. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. So uh, I'm Van Chan Ngo. So I am the product at CMU. And today, so I will talk about how the tie checker can be used to reason about the side channel attack. So it is a joint work with my colleague at CMU. Now, so actually, if you are familiar with the uh, information flow, then you know about the, the non-interference property. So the non-interference property says that so no high information, no high security flow to the now security. So in other words, so the high security does not so affect the loud security. So if we consider the uh, the attacker, so who can observe the public output and control the public input of the program. So if the program satisfies the non-interference property, so uh, then it's, uh, it's secure against this attacker. So, however, in practice, so the size of the high security or the now security, so they are public information. And the desired consumption of the program uh, is observable. So that means they are uh, now security. So, and the non-interference property uh, say nothing about the information flow to the Z-sort consumption, for example. So third, if we consider an attacker, so who can observe the public output, the size of the data, and the total Z-sort consumption of the program, and also uh, she can control the public uh, input. So, uh, so if the, the non-interference property uh, cannot be used to reason about the, the security of this uh, program against this uh, attacker, so for, uh, for example, so we consider here a simple sequential search program. So this program so checks sequentially the list of items until a, a mess for the key is found. Uh, we consider a setting where the need is high security, so that means it, the content of the need is secret, and the output uh, is high security too. And the search key is now security, so it is public information. So we see that, so this program is uh, satisfies the non-interference property. However, uh, if we consider the z sort consumption and the size of the, uh, the secret list as the now security uh, data, then there is an information uh, flow from the high security to the, the uh, z sort consumption uh, because the z sort consumption depends on the matching position of the search key in, in, the, in the secret list. Uh, so an attacker, by observing the z sort consumption, so she can uh, learn about the secret uh, content of the list. So to reason about the, uh, this kind of, uh, so in practice, so this kind of attack is called the side channel attack, right? So to reason about this kind of attack, so we propose the new uh, notion, so the notion about the z sort aware non-interference. So what is the meaning of z sort aware non-interference? So, First, so it says that no high security flow to the now security. So that means, so it ensures the, the classic non-interference property. Uh, moreover, uh, if the high security data, uh, the size of the high security data are fixed, then it requires on the execution of the program produce the content z-sort consumption. So uh, the attacker, if she observes the z-sort consumption of the program, so the the observing this sort consumption tell nothing about the high security. So uh, at all these are, so only the size of the high security data so affect the z sort consumption. So come back to the previous example. So here I uh, provide an implementation in functional language OCaml. So we you uh, assume that so suppose that so the function call. Uh, uh, consume the z-sort and other operation uh, consume no z-sort. So here I use the tick command to indicate that so the function call, a function call costs one z-sort unit and other operation costs zero z-sort unit. Uh, so because the, the, this function uh, uh, always checks all items in the secret list from the beginning to the end of the list, so the, the total number of function call equivalent to the uh, length of the list. So by the definition, so this program satisfies the z sort aware non-interference property. Uh, and in fact, uh, this program is uh, uh, correctly accepted by our tie system. So I will talk about the tie system later uh, at a well tied program. Uh, okay, so in this work, so we propose 
a quantitative language based solution to reason about the sectional attack. So, first, we design a Z sort type system uh, to, pro to pro program such that the Z source consumption is constant if the size of the, the, the inputs are fixed. Second, so we design a security type system. So, it is based on the classic information flow type system and it cooperates with the Z source type system to enforce the Z source aware non interference property statically. Uh, we also provide a method to quantify the amount of information leakage when the program is a non content Z source program. And we also provide an interactive and automatic program repair procedure to transform the EO type program into the well type program. So in this talk, so I will focus on the design of the security type system and other uh, things so you can find in the paper. So from a high level view, so our abroad work at Fono. So first, the user uh, provide our type system a cost model. So the cost model specifies so this sort of conception of primitives in the programming language. And second, uh, uh, the user provide a security label mapping. So that maps the variable to the security level and the program sort codes. So then the type system will check whether the program satisfies the Z sort aware non interference property. If not, user can use the interactive and automatic Z pair procedure to transform the, uh, the U type program into the well type program. So, about the security type system, the design of security type system. So, the type system is beyond the sender information flow type system. So that means that the own that uh, data types are annotated with the security levels. Uh, however, here we allow two forms of uh, Rockman. So here, the PC is a program counter uh, security uh, level. So it is used to check the implicit information flow as in the, the sender info, uh, information flow type system. And the gamma is a security context, so that maps the uh, uh, variable uh, to the security level, uh, security type. And what is the meaning of the document? So that is under the security setting gamma and the uh, program counter uh, PC. So the expression E has a security type S, and it uh, satisfies the non-interference property. Uh, if the document have uh, the count annotation, then the expression E satisfies the this sort of aware non interference property. So that means it is secure against the side channel attacks. Okay. And how we enforce the this sort of aware non interference property uh, with the tight, uh, tight system? So, Given that a program uh, or the, an expression satisfies a classic non interference property, so then there are two uh, ways to enforce the Z sort aware non interference property. So it, they are the global and local reasoning. Uh, so, first uh, method is global reasoning. So, we use, uh, so we use a Z sort type system to check the whole program is a content Z sort consumption. So this method is sound, but it requires us to reason about parts of the program uh, that are not affected by high security data. Mm. The second method is no code reasoning. So we ensure that so every uh, uh, condition expression in the program branching on the high security data is content this sort conception. So this method is not sufficient uh, because so it can reason the vanish program and uh, accept the invalid program. So, for example, uh, this program uh, show the insufficient of the local reasoning. So, here the wrap function is diverse the uh, input needs. So, it is the content resource consumption uh, in terms of the total number of function core. So, I assume that the wrap function is invented in the uh, OCaml language. Okay. And and the B is a high security Boolean variable. So in the first program, F1, so the if statement is a content Z sort consumption, because here is the, the Z sort consumption is zero for the most prime of the if statement. Uh, 
However, the uh, super expression, so the function f1, does not satisfy the this sort of well-known interference. So that means here, if we all, you only the local reasoning, so we will reject, uh, we will uh, accept the invalid program. Okay, and this, in the second example, the if statement is not content this sort uh, uh, consumption. However, the super expression, the uh, the uh, function f2 satisfy the this sort of well, uh, non-interference booty. So if, again here, if we use only the local reasoning uh, method, so we will reject this vanish program. So to overcome the issue, so our security type system uh, use a mix of global and local reasoning. So uh, it ensures that so every expression affected by high security is a this sort of aware non-interference expression or it is a sub-expression of a this sort of aware non-interference expression. So it is solved because uh, uh, at the end, so the total this sort uh, consumption is a quantum. So about local reasoning, uh, if I have the, the uh, sub-expression E1, so it satisfies the this sort of aware non-interference property, and I have another sub-expression E2, so uh, it also uh, satisfy the this sort of aware non-interference property, and they are connected by a now security data. So I can conclude that so the super expression E satisfies the this sort of aware non-interference property. Uh, for, uh, our type system so capture the local reasoning. Uh, for example, uh, the typing rule for the now security condition expression. So here. Uh, if I have a both brands of the uh, uh, if uh, expression, so they satisfy the this sort of aware non-interference property. So with the con annotation here, and the conditional of the if uh, expression is now security data, and then I conclude that so the uh, if expression satisfy the this sort of aware non-interference property. So about global reasoning. So assume that I have a two sub-expression, E1 and E2, so they don't have a, the this sort of aware non-interference property. And I have a, the super-expression, E. It is a content this sort consumption uh, uh, expression. Then I can conclude that, so the super-expression, E, satisfies the this sort of aware non-interference property. So uh, our uh, security type system capture the global reasoning by cooperating with the z source type system. So here, if I have uh, the expression E, so it satisfies the classic non-interference property, and it is well tied in the z source type system. So that means it is the uh, uh, content z source consumption. Then I conclude that so the expression E satisfies the z source aware non-interference property. Uh, to prove the uh, uh, content this sort program, so we use the uh, this sort uh, uh, type system. So here I only uh, give an overview of the this sort type system and the detail you can uh, find in the paper. So the this sort type system is based on the existing type system using the potential methods of the uh, amortis analysis. So here in our type system, if the potential cannot be weighted or created. So the difference between the initial potential and the final potential gives the exact this sort consumption of the program. So if the final potential is zero, then the initial potential gives the content this sort consumption of the program. So about evaluation. So uh, we have uh, implemented a working prototype. So it can reason about the program with the z sort consumption is linear and polynomial. So uh, we evaluated the, uh, the tool with the common primitive function and the function generated to cryptography and the function uh, generated to data, database query. So here we use uh, the code model is specified by different code metrics. So for example, the number of uh, evaluation steps the number of uh, uh, function call or the user-defined 
cotton batty. So, to sum up, uh, in this talk, so I introduce about the notion of this sort of wear, non interference property, to reason about the such an attacks. And uh, the design of the security uh, tie system, so uh, it is combined uh, the classic information flow tie system and the Z-source tie system uh, for checking both information flow and the Z-source consumption behaviors of program. So uh, you can try the tool at the Z website. And uh, we want to uh, acknowledge about the limitation of our approach. So here we see that so our tie system cannot reason about the effects of the compilation tool and the hardware platform. Uh, for example, it cannot reason about the uh, uh, compiler optimization, the garbage collection as, a, as in the previous talk, and also the catching, uh, uh, hardware catching uh, mechanism or the uh, instruction prediction in the hardware platform. So at a future work, so we want to make the cost model to capture the effects. So I will uh, end the talk now, and thank you, and I'm happy to, I'm happy to uh, take the question. Yeah. Any questions? If there are no other questions, I'll take the opportunity to make uh, an advertisement for, for Wen Chen. He will be on the job market in the next uh, higher season. So if you are have openings, please get in touch with him. Thank you. Uh, so Sanjay Kaligi from UC San Diego. Um, so you had the, uh, the tick function as one of the resources. So if you're doing something with uh, the tick function as the resource, does the developer have to annotate their program with the function? No, actually, uh, uh, in fact, so the user can uh, annotate the program uh, using the, the, for example, we, in implementation, we provide the text command for user to uh, uh, specify what is the code model of the, of the primitive in the programming language. Right. But here, we, in our implementation, so we, we, uh, we implement for the OCaml language, so the subset of the OCaml language. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to get exercise. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, your paper mentions that, uh, uh, that there is a long history of work in this area. And then it says something about what distinguishes your current work from the prior work. And as I understand it, it says that the difference is that the attacker is allowed to observe the final resource consumption. Right. Now, I don't quite understand that. Can you say anything about it? So actually here, so uh, the attack models are, so we only allow the attacker to observe the, the final and total resource consumption of the program. And the, uh, we uh, don't allow that the attacker can uh, observe the, uh, the resource consumption in between the, the execution of the program. So. OK, let's thank the speaker again. Um,